Hello and welcome to the Sparkling Autos YouTube channel for episode 27 of my Quick Test Tuesday series. This week, for the second week in a row, it's a garage therapy product and this is the revised wheel shampoo, which is very aptly named Wheel Shampoo V2. So straight into the directions and the first thing you might notice is that dilution rate of 10ml of product in a large bucket or 20ml for heavily soiled wheels. And for those who prefer the ever more popular foam sprayer approach, which I will be doing today, it's 10ml per 500ml of warm water. Now those are incredible dilution rates and means that for the home enthusiast washing their car once a week, this single 500ml bottle could last you anywhere from 6 months to a whole year. So the cost per wash looks great but the product has to perform, so let's get on with the test. As instructed then, I'm going to be adding 10ml of product per 500ml of warm water. And just to clarify, as I'm going to be using 1 litre of warm water, that's 20 milliliters of product. So what I've actually done here is taken a little amount of warm water from the bigger jug to the small jug, which I'm then going to add the product into. Now the only reason I do this is because the shampoo is so thick that accurately measuring exactly 20 ml for testing purposes isn't as easy as you might think, and the warmer water should theoretically mix with it, thinning it out, before adding it to the foam sprayer because when you're working with such small quantities, every millimetre is important. The problem though, as you're about to see, is that I'm an idiot, and in the excitement of making the video, I forgot to actually mix the two together in the smaller jug. It looks obvious on camera, but remember that I'm looking down into the jug. Well, that's my excuse anyway. But really it's not that big a deal, as I cleverly only added half the water at the start, so I can use the rest of the water to rinse the small one out. Genius! And now that I've finished fanning it around, I'll throw the rest of the water in and we can get on with it. Just remember that if you're ever using these IK foamers, or anything with plastic threads for that matter, that you should really avoid over tightening them. No fancy or expensive brushes being used today, just a few basic ones and a bucket of clean warm water. And not something I normally do, but I'm going to go with the instructions and pre-rinse the wheels. I've also jacked the wheels up to make cleaning the wheels much easier on my wrists and more efficient. Now obviously this doesn't suit everyone, but I do get very sore wrists and hands when I'm cleaning the wheels and this massively alleviates that pain, so I will be sticking to it whenever I can. Now that's quite possibly an early sign of arthritis, but as this isn't a medical show, we'll just get back to the task at hand. You're not supposed to be able to over pressurise these IK foamers, but apparently that doesn't stop me from trying. And within just a few seconds of spraying, I have a nice consistent even coverage over the entire wheel. Starting off on the faces with this soft 99 detailing brush. And I must say, despite only using 20ml of shampoo and applying it through the foamer, the amount of lubrication is absolutely fantastic. And that's very important, particularly on gloss back wheels, as it gives you the confidence that you're minimising any possibility of scratching, which would be caused by dragging dry particles of brake dust and other dirt over the surface of the wheel. You may notice here that I've been able to go around the entire wheel face without once feeling that the brush is drying out or in any need of more shampoo. This stuff foams really well, lubricates well and it lasts a very long time. Always remember too that you should rinse your brushes out before putting them back into the water and contaminating it, otherwise by the time you get to that fourth wheel you might as well be cleaning it with a scarring pad. Tough shine brush now on the tyres and yet again that wheel shampoo demonstrates just what an effective maintenance product it is. Baby, 
onto the wheel barrels now and just using a cheap generic wheel wheel imitation. But this just further demonstrates that top quality cleaning products can sometimes make cheaper accessories look even better. So I've loaded it up with some solution from the phoner and I'm just going to locate the tyre valve so that I can easily identify my start and end point. Knowing exactly where you've started is always important, but particularly on areas like the wheelbarrows as you don't want to be taking all the dirt your brush has collected in its cycle around the wheel and then start rubbing that dirt back into it again. That would be like rubbing a wash mitt over your sills and then bringing it back up across the door. You wouldn't do it in your paintwork and your wheels shouldn't be treated any differently. Once again then, thoroughly rinse the brush out before it's returned to the bucket. And then proceed to thoroughly rinse the wheel to once again reveal that glossy black shine. So having used the first version of this product for a couple of years, which has never disappointed, I did question if there was a need for this one. So what do I think of it overall? Well before that, there's only two things left to do. One is to answer that all important question, and the second is to align the centre cap. Well let's be honest, if you've ever used this or V1, you'll know that this one was never in any doubt. It's an improvement on an already fantastic product, which was my only doubt really to begin with, as in was this product really necessary? Well whether it was or not, the fact is it's a fantastic product and it's definitely earned a place on the shelf. And that ladies and gentlemen is all I have to say about that. As always if you've made it this far I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Please feel free to leave any comments and give the video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I will hopefully see you on the next one. Take care.